<laughs> so what what are we going to be doing today then? What's what's the plan of action? So I'm going to do a drawing activity with you, mm. Sam, and mm. for everyone who's joining in uh, around. It's an observational drawing activity, which I like to call, and that mm. other people call blind contour drawing. Ooh. There's also contour drawing, but we're going to do it today with a few uh, extra challenges when mm. we're not able to look at the page. We're only going to stare at the thing that we're going to draw, okay. which today will be our hand, because mm -hmm. most of us should have a hand that we can get in our face and we can have a look at some of the things. Mm -hmm. But notice things about your hand that you might not really have given much attention to before. So that's what we'll be doing. Fantastic. So just, just to quickly clarify, what what is contour mean is that like the way someone dresses or something like that or it's interesting so contours we're focusing on the lines uh, of the of the objects and things that we see mm. so interestingly for those of you out there who are into makeup the, the art of contouring one's face is mm. usually around uh, initially creating lines that might accentuate your cheekbones and your jawline or things like that so it's it's focusing on those edges that define things. Mm. So that's there's a real mm. emphasis on the, the element of line that we'll be looking at today. Fantastic, fantastic. Let's uh, so what do you think? Should we get stuck in? We do a little experiment. Let's do it. Let's do I'm it. Do things and you're gonna tell me what you think they are. Okay. Let's let's go. Right, so we've got a, it looks like we got a, a beautiful sunshiny day there. Uh, nice. That looks like a giant floating cloud, perhaps a cumulus nimbus, if I'm correct. That's the, I think that's the right word there. Now at the bottom of that, we seem to have a tree. I can see there's a tree growing there out of the ground. There's the ground. And we have some flying M's. Mm, I'm loving it. So a bit of brand placement. Fantastic. <laughs> then of course a bird Sam yeah. oh, of course of course that's all right of course <laughs> so flying chicken nuggets we have a little uh, have a little house there that looks like a nice little house look at that it's got a door and here we have a snow cat or just a cat in general it looks very good and the cat is at the bottom of the hill that it rolled down very interesting oh and there's a there's a person. Check that out. Hello, person. Look, they're waving at us. We'll all wave at the person as well. Hello, person. Hey, hey, look. So uh, all of these things here, I hope you were immediately be able, you were able to tell me what they were. So they're, they're common symbols that we see a lot in, in drawing, especially for younger kids. Or actually, younger kids don't. And then they start to, when they get that sense of, oh, I want to belong as part of my group, they all start to draw in a really similar way. They look at what everyone else is doing and go, oh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can do lollipop trees. Check this bad boy out. And they, that sort of builds a sense of, I'm a part of this group. And there's real security and safety that comes with that. So that's another reason why it's really hard to ask our brain mm. to undo some of this stuff. So, so that's what we're going to do, do next. What were you going to say, Sam? Well, I was going to say, so a, a symbol is, it's a symbol because when we draw something on paper, it's obviously not the real thing. So it's only a representation of what the real thing could be. Is that yes. right? Yes. Ah, and and yeah. these are symbols that are common. So mm. we've got that sense of, there's a bit of common visual language here mm, that mm. we are we are building and that we kind of we seem to perpetuate it forever. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> um, so it's not to say that this stuff is bad. Uh, it's a part of it's a developmental part of uh, not just drawing but also social um, friendship relationship building that happens in classrooms. Mm, mm, mm. But there is more to this in terms of how do we draw because there comes a point where adults or you know kids will go i can't draw mm. i can't go past this but there's actually okay. really great exercises we can all do because it is just a skill yeah. the more that you do it the better you get at it fantastic fantastic so uh we will we'll barrel ahead but just very quickly 
Uh, we know there are some fan. We got some. Of course, we got a whole fantastic audience. So thank you to everyone in the audience as well. Uh, so we'll we'll start chit chatting to. We'll sort of chit chat or address them as well. So they're all involved in this little procedure. So what is next on the? What is next? Do you think on our on our on our plan, Abby? Well, I think we might just get straight into it and let's do it. a blind contour drawing of mm -hmm. our hand. Right, okay. So, you heard everyone there, Abby. So, make sure you have a pen and or pencil or a crayon or a yes. piece of charcoal. Anything could work. You know, yes. a stick in the sand and well and still we need. And here, my piece of paper, I've got it stuck down just mm. with two little pieces of tape. Mm -hmm. You only know, need little pieces. Yeah. And it is important to stick it down because... Our hand is going to move across it ah. and the paper can move around. And if the paper moves around, you'll get a very different outcome. So we want to try and avoid that if we can. Okay. Okay. So everyone has to stick down their piece of paper. Fantastic. If they have a piece or if they have a whiteboard or a sand pit or anything, it doesn't really matter what the surface is, I take it? Yes. Ideally, we want to be able to, because I'm sitting at a desk here and I've got my piece of paper taped down. Mm -hmm. But I'm right-handed, so uh -huh. I'm going to put my right hand, it's mm -hmm. going to now go down uh -huh. onto the paper sideways. Right. If you're left-handed, though, it'll be the other way around. Okay. And here's a fun thing. As an extension, mm -hmm. you can do this with your non-preferred hand. <laughs> so at the end of this session, I'm actually going to write, send through a document mm -hmm. with a what to do next with a bunch of things that the students and teachers out there might like to do, but we won't talk about that just now. It'll come. Fantastic. So there'll be there'll be activities after after the video that all your teachers will be able to take you through, everyone. Yeah. Yes. The building on the thing that we're going to do today. So mm -hmm. there's just there's limitless possibilities we can take this. All right. All right. So let, let's 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 dive in. Let's dive in. So it's blind because we're not looking at the paper. We yes, have to resist. So. It might be a good idea, teachers and students. I'm going to do a really quick one. You might mm -hmm. want to listen to yep. my, what I'm sort of, I'm going to narrate what I'm doing as I do it to give you a sense of some of the things that I am doing and not doing and why they're important mm -hmm. and for you to keep in mind while you do this. So I'm going to stop looking at you now, Sam, mm -hmm. and I'm going to look, put my hand up in front of my face. Okay, and I just want it at a comfortable distance so that I can see the detail of it. So I'm going to draw my palm side today and I'm just going to take a moment to really look at my hand. Mm -hmm. So there are so many lines on my hand and there are freckles, there's a callus, there's a <laughs> ring, there's some pretty ordinary things on there actually. But it's that <laughs> thing of going, wow, you know, I've never really paid much attention to my hand. There's a lot of detail here. Mm. And now what I'm going to do is without looking away from my hand, I'm going to draw all of the lines that I see. So all of the contours of my hand. I'm not going to lift my texture off the page. It has to be in a continuous line. So mm. just as a little caveat, please know that when you do this, your brain is going to be fighting hard to look at the paper, okay? <laughs> it's going to be going, look at the paper, you're drawing, you can't see what it looks like, what if it looks terrible? So there's going to be all of these things happening in your brain that you need to resist. Just look at the hair. Okay, so once the pen touches the paper, don't pick the pen back up. So I'm counting on you, Sam. All right. If you see me peek, you uh -huh. have to tell me. Okay, okay. Right. Here we go. Going up around my wrist. Oh, there's a couple of lines there on my wrist. The wrinkles going on. I'm going to come up around the side of my thumb now. Mm. Oh, there's my little thumbnail. Oh, there's a couple of really nasty lines on my thumb here. Oh, a couple of creases. Oh, there's a big one there too. Oh, here we go. Oh, I'm going to do that big line there because I'll probably forget that. Mm. Coming up now around my index finger, there's one line, two lines, around the top, down the side, middle finger, oh, I missed a line, yeah, I'll go back up. So I'm just, if I forget mm. something, I don't lift my text up, 
Mm -hmm. I just made my way back to the bit that I missed. Well, here's my ring. There we go. The ring, ring finger. Ooh, you funny shape there, mate. There we go, around the top. A bit more there. Yeah. Okay, down to Pinky, we're in the home straight. All right. Oh, look, I just went off the page. And you know what? My brain was like, oh, gosh, can you just look? And I went, nope. And I just kept going. Look at that. Willpower. Yep. And I felt it. My brain was going, oh, you're making such a mess. People are going to laugh. This is going to look ridiculous. And there you have it. Wow, look at that. Uh, did I peek? No, I didn't. I did not see so much as a flutter of an eye. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Now I wonder before mm. I talk about this and show you some things, mm. I wonder if you, Sam, mm. and some of the students out there might like to have a go at this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and I'm going to give you teachers and everyone out there. I'm going to give you maybe three minutes. Yep. Okay, but just remember too, after this um, event, everyone out there, you can do this again, it can take as long as you want, five minutes, ten minutes, two minutes, whatever. But I'm going to get you to start, Sam, mm -hmm. to get you to turn around. Sure, okay, we can Go do a three-minute, hold on, let me, let me get to yeah. camera two. All right, so okay. i got my pen. Here we go. Brilliant. So All right. Sam's going to be doing his a bit more awkwardly because... He's, yeah, don't you look, Sam? I'm not going to, I'm not, you know what, everyone? I'm going to double down. I'm going to just close my eyes outright. There we go. So I can. But now you can't see your hand, Sam. Oh, yeah, that's, a, well, I could. It's just very dark. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. All right, okay, so. Ready, set, go. So I think, uh, so it's no, all it's about not. getting those, I guess it's about getting those little, those creases that you wouldn't normally, you wouldn't normally do, I suppose. Yeah, just, isn't it? you know, don't worry about what it's going to look like and right. just worry about what you can see. What do you see on your oh, hand? I forgot the, I forgot How the fact that the hands Get your brain to think about communicating to your hand. How will I make that mark? All right. How am I going to make mark? Right, interesting. So what's the what's the brain process that's going on here? Why is it so hard to not look at the not look at the picture? Because we're basically taking out another layer of data information here for your brain, and that yeah. is that you being able to look at the page is going to help you reaffirm some of the the guesstimates that you're making in your brain about measuring things. So you've got that. You're looking visually and you're making decisions and judgments around that sort of how long your finger is, how wide is this line, and you are taking away that, that sense of sight that would let you confirm mm. and you're just relying on your brain and your hand working as a team. Very interesting. Yeah, it's, a, it's very, very good for your brain to do this work. There you go. It's good for your brain. Good for the brain health. Oh no, it I can, is, I yeah. can, I can remember. And, and also too, just the fact that we're having a couple of moments here to slow down and just look at something that is close to you, and just be in that moment of drawing those things in front of you. There's actually an element of of being present that's with this as well that's also very good for you. That's very Eckhart Tolle-esque. We must yeah. be present at all times. There yeah. we go. Okay. I think. And hopefully too, some of the kids out there, you've got about 30 seconds oh, okay. are going to be out there and having a bit of a giggle um, yeah. when they look around at each other's drawing because they should all look quite bizarre and right. quite different. Okay. Depending on how quickly you have gone. Going from round two to around it. Okay. I'll tell you what, you're right when you're saying, you know, I've never, you know, people rarely just take the opportunity yes. to look at their hand. You know, I'll tell you what, you can tell I've never done much physical manual labour, that's for certain. That? <laughs> smooth as, right. smooth as baby's Five spot. seconds. All right. Five seconds. Five seconds. Hang on. I'll try to, I'll try to initial it. There we go. And that's uh, the 29th of the 10th. You never know, it could be a famous artwork. Oh, let's make sure you take a picture of it before you leave today, okay? <laughs> of course. 
All right, let's see what you've done. All right, I'm going to take a step back. Here we go. Put my glasses on. You know, you wow. really, this is cool and interesting, right? Mm. Because you started quite small. So that's also something that is a, is a, um, a safety thing that happens here when we do this kind of drawing mm. because our brain's going, oh, my God, don't make this too big because then you'll have a big, silly picture for people to look at. So sometimes you might have drawn something here that's really tiny because your brain's going, I'll just keep it really small so no one will notice if I make a mistake. But then you have become, you've sort of loosened up a bit there mm. and you've relaxed and you've started to make much bigger oh. marks. So that's really cool. Don't think, thank you very much. You know, I'm, all, I'm always a fan. You know, you should never be ashamed of small marks. You know, you just got to... Just gotta live up to it. That's Small it. Small marks make up a big picture, don't they? <laughs> That's true. How true is that? That's oh, cool. right. So well, that I'm was fun. I'm gonna just ask a couple of questions for you now. All right. The teachers might like to do this too. Ooh. If we were to look at you, look at my one, Sam. Okay. I might do mine first. Do you see anything else in this picture? Uh, if we were to think about Mr. Oh. Squiggle. Mm -hmm. is, there any, is there anything in here that might look like something else? Well, that's a that's a very good question, isn't there? Is there anything else in there? Well, uh, it could be it could be a bundle of carrots. I'm getting yes. a bundle of carrots vibe. I can see that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we could go here, and then we'd have some grass and things at the top. Yep, yep. That that's it. That's it. It yes. could be. I'm I'm getting. I feel I feel like there's an elephant hiding in there now. You know, we got the little trunk at the front there with his with their oh, long legs. Yes. Yeah. If this was upside down, absolutely. Mm. So we might go, there's some, some tusks out here, and That's then we've it. got a big ear there. Yeah. Yeah, like I like it. Or one of those one of those elephants that has, like, you know, the little tower on top of it, you know, that sort of thing. That's, oh, what, I'm, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's pretty cool. What else What else could there be in there? Hmm. Hmm. There could be... There could be... I'm just trying to look at it. This is interesting because it's not often that you try to turn your brain on and look look through something. What else could there be there? Elephant, a bunch of carrots. What, what, do, what do you think? What do you think, Abby? What are you seeing? I usually find it really hard to not see a rooster. <laughs> That's because I've just got a new chicken. So I'm oh. all about chickens at the moment. You've got chickens on the mind. I do. So I always tend to see that this could be, like, this is his, his cr the crown, mm -hmm. they've got a comb, that's his comb there. Yeah. He's got all these nice feathers around Ooh. here. He's got his eye that he's going to check stuff out with, and he's currently crowing, so he's like, Rawr. Look at that. So yeah. the kids out there, you might be having, this is a good time to have some conversations. Have a walk around and have a look at each other's drawing, and you might start to see some other things in there that I've thought. Mm. I'm just going to show you so a little bit of a, do a process here. Um, just a few, a few that I prepared earlier with oh. some students from past years in the mm. um, in their teaching degrees. Yeah. But you you might start with just mm. your hand, maybe your hand in a different gesture. Mm -hmm. You could draw a friend's face. Yeah. And then we've got a few of those um, on our slides that we'll have a look at in a moment. But it could be anything. It could be an mm. object that the teacher sets up in the classroom. You could do an act as an experiment mm. just to see how your drawing develops and what things you feel happen with that. Mm. Every day you might like to start your day with 10 minutes mm -hmm. of doing a blind contour drawing activity. <laughs> and Five speaking minutes. of 10 minutes, uh, yeah. before we jump into having a look at some of these uh, pictures here and so forth, why don't we... Uh, why don't we Briefly cut to a five minute break uh, and that'll give the students time to come up. Hopefully everyone watching this in school or at home come up with some questions that they might be interested in asking or maybe something that they see in some of these pictures. And we are back. We are back. Thank you, everyone. Did you have like a cool little meditative moment? Maybe you asked each other a few questions and maybe you had a bit of a think about what some of Abby's drawing looked like, or maybe what your classmates' drawing looked like. So now that we're now that we're back, we'll jump to Abby. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Hello there. Yeah. 
So we're we're back now. So what? Let's uh, let's barrel ahead, shall we? And we'll wait for more. Hopefully, some questions to come through. Remember, everyone, you can always ask any questions you would like. Otherwise, let's look at some of those other artworks you said that uh, you have prepared. Fantastic. So, yeah, don't forget, um, at the end of today, I haven't actually got it ready yet, but I will send through a, a document with some different things that, where you can take this. So whether it's mm. about uh, extending this picture in that kind of Mr Squiggle fashion where we take one picture and we sort of see a thing in it and turn it into another, or we look at doing different objects so we move it's very mm. weird to do someone's face i have to say because <laughs> it can be quite intense to be staring at someone even for 30 seconds mm. you know so that can be something that we build up to um i, I certainly wouldn't start with that one mm, 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 but, um, mm. these are just a couple of different so this one i thought was really interesting um mm. in that it's just a, it's an example too of this is a nice blank slate for something that we could turn it into. So mm. when I look at this one, um, I, I can't help but think about and see a landscape. So something yeah. that could be developed here and it might be waves or things like oh, that. Oh, yeah. No, I can I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. And some of these, we often see carrots. So that's always, it was great to yeah. hear you pick up on that straight away, Sam, that there's a bunch of carrots. I've seen many bunches of carrots. Yeah drawn um, <laughs> from these hand pictures over the years. But I think just before we had our break, mm -hmm. um, well, we start with our hand, but then we might look at a different, our hand doing something different. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, you know, a, a fist clenched or, um, you know, a different way that our hand might bend. Mm -hmm. So that can, that should be, brings another kind of, when we start to get the hang of drawing just our hands, uh, we want to constantly be changing it up too mm. so we can extend the benefit of the exercise. So you're having to make new assessments and estimates mm. about measuring the distance of things and telling your hand to do all that work. Fascinating. Fascinating stuff. So. Yeah. So here's one. Um, it's a galah. Yeah. Yeah. Well spotted. <laughs> uh, but I, also, I think before they made this into a galah, mm. I can remember there was quite a bit of deliberate deliberating around is this a dog or is it so sideways it could have mm -hmm. been a dog running uh, but they eventually went with it being a galah yeah oh we have uh, we have two questions uh mm -hmm. we have two questions abby uh so firstly uh we have one from jamie jamie asks how long has abby been drawing how long have you been drawing for abby oh look i but ever since I was little, mm. I've just loved to draw. Wow. You know, I just would just draw stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I never started, I started off drawing like everyone else, just random marks, squiggles. But it's, it's always just been something that I think like anything, you could, just the more you do it, the better you get at it. And then that kind of feeds that, oh, you know, you can start to see that you like what you're drawing. Mm. So then you draw more and it just snowballs. So... And I'm 36 now, so I've been drawing for a while. Wow. But I do it for different reasons mm. a, a lot now. It's more around um, I just need a moment to kind of snap out of, you know, digital land. Mm -hmm. So much technology these days and just to, you know, but get my hand to team, team up with my brain and mm -hmm. just put what I'm Go doing. Go on, team. Come on, we can do it together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, so it has a very different hmm. role in my life now. Fantastic. Um, and I think that's really because of all the different benefits that hmm. I, I know I get from it. Fantastic. Um, just a, two more and then we'll very quickly jump back in. I, I'm aware that we're sort of rapidly careening out of time. Yes. Uh, so we have one from Riley and Riley asks, what got you into drawing in the first place? What inspired oh. you to start drawing? So you said doodling, just relaxing as most people do, but was there a particular point where you really said, you know what, actually, this is the kind of thing I want to teach? Oh, well, funny. Mm. I had my parents tell me that I would eat all of my art materials. I, and even as a mm. little person, I just mm. was like, I wanted to eat crayons. I'm no. not saying do this, but it was just, I just lived and breathed making stuff. Oh, don't do it. Okay, sorry. Yeah, don't do it. But um, that was, I don't do it now, of course, mm. but there was 
definitely that interest, I think, that, you know, and I think for anything, whether it's drawing or something else, if you have an interest in something, mm. you know, feed that interest as much as you can and encourage mm. others to help you do that. Um, but I love teaching. I love just doing all of this kind of stuff with other people and helping them learn new things mm. and challenge their ideas about what they believe in terms of what they're good at or not good at because this is ultimately not about being good or bad at drawing. This mm. is just a practice and sense. you get better at it the more you do it. And what do you enjoy drawing most? Summer asks, what, uh, what does Abby enjoy drawing most? Oh, people. People? Oh, I love drawing people. And mm. most of my artwork now is painting. Mm. But underneath every painting that I do mm. is a whole bunch of drawing before <laughs> paint hits the canvas. So, yeah, I just love, I just love people. There you go. That's beautiful. Well, hey, you're in the right profession for exactly that. Um, yes, it does help. It does probably, probably help. Do we want to uh, briefly just look at the PowerPoint that I think yeah. you've, uh, you've pre uh, prepared? Sure, let's do that. Yep. Just a quick one. It's really just a few examples sure, of sure. Um, more drawings. Mm. But let's have a quick look. Let's have a gander. Can you see them? Yep, contour drawing, but why? You just have to say next slide. So let's move next, on to well, the next. Here we go. We have talked quite a bit about the but why mm -hmm. um, because of all of the things around helping train mm -hmm. our brain out of just drawing things that it knows mm. through symbols or common visual language and really building on that to get your hand your hand and your brain to work as a team mm. and help build your spatial awareness, mm -hmm. your hand-eye coordination, your ability to visually estimate mm -hmm. and mathematic mm -hmm. and using mm -hmm. maths and things to make marks to, to convey that measurement. So there's a whole and that helps heaps of other things that you do wherever mm -hmm. you would use those skills outside drawing. So that's, that's not been present. Probably already talked about that. So let's go to the next one. All right. So we're now looking at, uh, what do we got here? We got uh, a bottle of Mountain Dew in a chair, a four-legged stool by the looks of it. Aren't they cool? I just, because look, if you teachers, students, if you mm. just Google blonde contour drawing, you will find just a huge range of different examples. So. Mm. Looking at the ways that someone has developed their practice and just, you know, even every day doing this for five minutes, you quickly start to build that those skills because mm. you get a really strong team between your hand and your eye. So that's some objects. So any, you don't really, you just need anything to do mm. this work. And that's another great thing about it is you don't need a bunch of fancy materials. We'll go to the next one. Fine. So now what have we got here? Now this is interesting. So we have groups of people, but some of these are coloured in. Yeah, yeah. So this is sort of now starting to look at um, different ways to sort of move beyond just drawing mm. with one colour and um, starting to think about, if we're looking at people, mm. it might have something to do with what we know about them and what mm -hmm. they like. So this is sort of coming into that idea of a portrait where a portrait doesn't necessarily have to look exactly like the person to be a good portrait. Mm -hmm. I would mm -hmm. say to you that a good portrait is an image that has lot tells us lots about who the person is and what they care about. Yeah. So a portrait could have, you know, a whole range of different objects mm. or things that matter to that person. So sort of really trying to move past that that idea or mm. fixation that we tend to get around the portrait isn't good unless it looks exactly like the person. Okay. Because that doesn't actually tell us anything about who they are, does it? Well, I guess that's about capturing the character or, or thinking outside the box rather than using realism and naturalism in order to actually sort of say, well, here's the, here's the well, ultimately the symbol of this thing that apparently I'm drawing. There you Beautiful. go. That's it. Have a look <laughs> at the next one. Okay. Next slide. We. Oh, there you go. So what's this? Ta-ta AR. Yeah. So what I wanted to just give a quick little encourage, um, for our, encouragement for our teachers mm -hmm. is the Tasmanian Art Teachers Association and mm -hmm. Art Education Australia are two, so we've got our state-based professional organisation for mm -hmm. teachers of visual art from kindergarten to, to tertiary and the National Association as well, that these are really fantastic organisations for you to be a member of. Both have really great opportunities for professional mm -hmm. learning. They have teaching and education resources for the teacher and the students. 
really great networks and communities of people sharing ideas about a whole range of different different work that you could do in your classroom. So I'd really encourage you to um, find a moment and go and explore these places if you haven't already. And there's probably just a bit of information there by memory. That's about it. That's it. Where to find me. Yep, if yep, that's it. Give you, give you a like and give you a follow and give you a re repost, you know, that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. Tweet questions out. <laughs> or maybe that's what people can do. Maybe you, the students at home, can uh, tweet uh, to Abby. There she is, Abby J. D. You can tweet your pictures to her and maybe she can tag the Peter Underwood Centre. Who knows? Yeah, Never know. yeah we now, can do that. Sorry, Abby. Unfortunately, we have rapidly run out of time, so... Just as just as uh, Tata there is for the Teachers Association, we'll have to say Tata today now for the moment. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, Abby. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Sam. Yeah. And Peter Underwood. Woohoo! Woohoo! And thank you at home and at school in your classrooms, whether that's in person or online. Thank you once again, students, for tuning in today. Hope you learned something new, interesting and different. Of course, a big thank you to the Peter Underwood Centre. And of course, a big thank you to UCF TV, Alive for Kids. So make sure you get out there with your markers, with your pencils, with your crayons or your sticks and start walking around looking at stuff and doodling on a wall. Until next time, we'll catch you all later.